Welcome to Excelworks video tutorials. The title of this presentation is How to compute a function derivative in Excel and Google Sheets with the function derivF. Analytical derivatives are typically hard to obtain and sometimes they are too complex to represent. In this presentation we will show you how to compute high precision first and higher order numerical derivatives of any function using the derivF function and how to nest derivative f to compute mixed and partial derivatives of higher dimensional functions. Let's begin by introducing the derivative f function parameters. Derivative f takes three required parameters. A reference to the formula you want to differentiate, a reference to the formula variable you want to differentiate with respect to, and the point where you want to compute the derivative. Now, in the third argument, you can either supply a single point or a vector of points to compute the derivatives at once. There are two additional optional parameters. The fourth one is the derivative order you want to compute. The default is the first derivative. And if you want to compute higher derivatives, you can supply two, three, or four. And the fifth argument enables you to control the internal algorithm. Derivative employs Ritter's method with Nivelle algorithm to produce an adaptive step which achieves much higher precision compared to finite differencing methods. Unfortunately, derivative f is not a standard function in Excel or Google Sheets. You will have to enable this by installing the Excel Lab Calculus functions add-in. If you are running Excel on a Windows PC, download and install Excel Lab 7 from excel-works.com. If you have an Office 365 subscription, you can also install directly from Microsoft App Source. If you are running Excel on an Apple Mac, you will have to install Excel Lab 365 from Microsoft App Source Store. Simply in your Excel ribbon, click Insert, and then select Get Add-ins. Search for Calculus, and you will find the add-in. Just click Add to enable it. If you are in Google Sheets, just go to the Google marketplace and search for calculus you'll find the calculus functions add-on and install it next we are going to demonstrate the use of derivative f in excel the procedure in google sheets is virtually the same we are going to work with the function shown here and we plan to compute the derivative at a set of sampled points for this function then compare the results to the known analytical derivative for that function then we will show you how easy it is to, in fact, repeat the same procedure but for higher derivatives. Let me get started with Excel. started Excel with an empty book and I copied my function and its derivative for reference. Let me begin by defining a formula for the function using x1 a variable. and we get a num error. Now this is expected because x1 is undefined, has a default value of zero, and logarithmic of x is undefined. We can resolve this error quickly by simply assigning any value for x1 other than zero. So let's put one in here, and now Excel should be happy and give us a value for this formula. Now this, this is really necessary only for Excel Lab 365 and Google Sheets. Um, Excel Lab 7 on Windows PCs is more tolerant and actually you can proceed working with this formula in the calculus functions without having to resolve that error because in this case x1 is just really a dummy variable for the function. Now I'm going to generate a set of points starting from point 1 using the autofill feature all the way to 1.5. The first thing I would like to do is, in fact, evaluate the function value at these points. So I'm going to take the formula from here, copy it here, and modify x1 to point to a3. Using the autofill feature, I can fill in the rest of the values. Now, so let's name this f, and let's name this x, this vector here. Now let's compute the derivative with derivative f. Call this f prime. I'm going to use my derivative function, passing in my formula. 
my variable deriv differentiation and the point I want to compute the derivatives at. In this case, it's a whole vector. Now, because I'm working with Excel Lab 365, I can take advantage of the spell feature, and all I have to do is just press Enter, and it will automatically expand the result into a vector for me. If I'm working with Excel Lab 7, that's not going to work. I'll, I'll talk about this a little bit later. You'll have to run it as an array formula in Excel Lab 7. Anyway, so now let's continue with our demonstration here. So I've got the values at these points. Now I want to see how well I've done. So what I need to do is uh, compute the derivatives at these points and then compare these values to the analytical derivatives. So bear with me while I type in this formula for the analytical derivative. So I just finished typing my formula for the analytical derivatives right here. So you can see it in the formula bar. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm referencing A3 as my variable here because we're gonna generate the values using autofill. Now again, the same procedure. I'm going to compute the analytical formula using the autofill. To be precise, let's call this f prime and let's call this deriv f so we can distinguish the two columns. Now, let's actually compare how well we've done with deriv f compared to the analytical values. So I'm just going to take the difference between these two um, values and that's going to be simply the analytical minus the numerical and let's complete the rest of the values and as you can see they are virtually identical it's down to machine precision so it's a lot easier to compute the numerical derivatives with high precision compared to actually finding that analytical derivative and typing it in correctly one more thing I would like to show you here is how to compute higher order derivatives by simply supplying a derivative, derivative order. So if I go here to my formula and the default for the derivative is 1, so if I just put 1 in the fourth argument, nothing is going to change really. But now I can compute second order derivatives or third order or fourth order by simply changing this number to 2. So this is going to give me now the second order derivative of this function in this column. Obviously this is now not relevant because we don't have values for the analytical values for the second derivative. I can also do the same thing here uh, by supplying for example 3 and that will give me the third derivative for the function at these points. Uh, and these are as accurate as it's possible given the algorithm. One important difference I'd like to emphasize between the different versions of Excel Lab on Windows versus uh, Apple Macs and Google Sheet is the way you deal with array formulas. If you need to compute derive f at a single point, then it's straightforward. You just have to type the formula and hit enter and you get a single result back. But if you have to compute multiple derivatives at once, it's more efficient to pass a vector and get the derivatives at once. Now you have multiple choices here to do that. If you're working on Windows PC, you can do that with autofill feature, the same way we've generated these points. However, if we're going to use the autofill feature, it's important to lock in the first two parameters for derivative function and you do that with the dollar sign syntax you can lock in the column and the row number or either one in this case i'm locking both of them so when i use the autofill excel will only increment my points in the third parameter but will leave these intact the other two more efficient options is to evaluate derivative f as an array formula and there is a slight difference here uh, the standard procedure is to use the control shift enter and that how Excel always worked but now with the introduction of Excel Lab 365 and Excel 365 new integration framework they've actually added a new nice spell feature which allows you to compute array formulas simply the same way you compute s uh, standard formulas by hitting enter and it will expand automatically into neighboring cells but that only works with Excel Lab 365 and Google Sheets. It will not work with Excel Lab 7 on Windows. So let me show you how you would actually do the, uh, the proper array formula if you are working with Windows version. Going back to my Excel, I'm going to move this to make some room here. 
and move both of these columns away using this spell feature so you can see my formula is simply a standard formula but my points here are a vector and all I have to do is click enter and Excel automatically expands my result however as I mentioned this spell feature only works with Excel Lab 365 and Google Sheets if you are running Excel 7 on Windows PC you can do that so the way you would do this is you would have to highlight your output array ahead of time let's copy our derivative formula and let's now calculate it as a proper array formula so I have to highlight my output range gonna click in the formula bar I'm gonna copy my formula here and now instead of pressing enter I have to press simultaneously shift control enter so the three buttons together shift control enter and Excel computes the result now if you look at the formula bar you see that in cell Excel has inserted curly brackets around my formula to indicate that this is an array formula now it's exactly the same result the difference is actually you cannot change this result this array anymore it's, con it's, con it's just one entity this is the way Excel works uh, and these two modes are not interchangeable uh, if you want to share files between Excel Lab 7 on Windows and other platforms you're probably better off always using that formula because that's supported in both platforms but if you use the spell feature it will only work in Excel 365 on Macs and Google Sheets the other thing I wanted to demonstrate is how you do the same thing but using the autofill feature so I am going to take my formula here and put it in a new column new cell now I am going just to put A3 here so I've computed my derivative at a single point in A3 and now I want to use autofill to generate the rest of the points. So in order to do this I have to lock in the first two arguments as I mentioned with the dollar sign syntax both the formula I'm, because I don't want Excel to increment these cells for me and just leave A3 free. This changes nothing but now if I use the autofill Excel will automatically fill in the rest. If you click on any of these, you can see that only the point of the derivative point is being incremented as you drag down. Now, one word of caution is uh, this is okay to use in Windows platform because there is no overhead. But if you're using this on Google Sheets or Excel 365, this is a lot more inefficient and more expensive than just doing it as an array formula. And in fact, if you're doing this heavily for a large number of values, you, your uh, posts to the server might be uh, uh, blocked if you are overtaxing the server with repeated quick uh, evaluations. So be careful with the autofill feature with large data sets and always rely on the uh, array formula approach because it's a lot more efficient. Next, I'll demonstrate how to compute higher order derivatives of multidimensional functions by nesting derivative f. I'll work with a simple example here as you can see and I will compute the partial derivative at a given point. Let's move into Excel to show this. We are back in Excel and I've copied the function and the partial derivative we want to compute for reference. So let me begin by defining a formula for my function using x1 and y1 as my variables. Next, I'm going to define my first partial derivative with respect to y here. The order sometimes is not important, but in just case, we're just going to follow the same order. Using the derivative func derive function, I will pass in my formula. And my variable differentiation in this case is y1. And the point would be pi over 2. And I get some value. Then I'll do the outer partial derivative, same way. Now my formula is the inner derivative in F7, and my variable of differentiation is x1 now, and the value, the point of differentiation is pi. 
and I get my answer. In this case, the order doesn't really matter because the function is smooth, but that's the procedure you would follow. And you can extend this procedure to calculate partial derivatives of any order. In the event derivative f is not able to converge, there are a couple of things you could do. In argument number five, there is some controls for the algorithm that you can change, which might help with convergence. And these two controls are the initial step for the algorithm and the tolerance. The way you would change the default values is by using argument five, passing the keys and your new values. Exactly in the syntax I've shown here, uh, using the array constant syntax, although you could also define these in a range and pass their address. Now, when doing this, you want to probably relax the tolerance, make it a little bit less stringent, and for the initial step, you want to try both small and large values. So the algorithm will adjust the value as it adapts the step. Help, But also keep in mind that the derivative at a given point is just not defined, and uh, there's no way you can actually compute it. In this presentation, we have talked about the derivative function, part of the XLAB calculus functions family. There is a dozen other functions to do all sort of calculus calculations, including integration, differentiation, interpolation, solving equations, differential equations, including ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations, as well as optimization. If you are interested, go to excel-works.com to check out several examples for these functions. Thank you for watching.